Well, I think, uh, as you can see, I've played again. I just wasn't happy with, with such a straight background. Now that I've added more vertical shapes, you know, on the canvas. And uh, this bothers me. I'm not losing sleep over it. But I just don't like the white. You know, the crucial stuff's going to be up in here, not here. So, just to make things easy, and I like making things easy, I'm, uh, I'm, see, like, I had some stuff left over on my palette, so, uh, just, you know, a little raw umber, a little burnt sienna, a little ultramarine blue, and I just did that, and now I've sort of just dumped more ultramarine blue on my palette. I'm just making it dark. I'm getting rid of the white. Um, and I will... I'll draw my designs in here in the foreground later. I'll just, you know... I kind of hate to have a problem sitting in front of my face all the time when uh, I have other things that are more well, it have to be solved more immediately, which is going to be, you know, the sky and other areas. So I'm just going to dump this stuff and worry about it later. You know, it's a nice grouping of words for procrastination. But I think it's procrastination with a reason. So that's the reason I'm just covering all this dark stuff here. Using a great big brush, which uh, instead of taking an hour to paint or to, to wash this in, it'll be done in a couple of minutes. Of course, then it'll take an hour to wash this brush out. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if I'm winning or not. That's okay. And I think uh, I think because I like the idea of, of you know heavy dark matter in the in the sky up here, um, but I think I'm going to commit to what I've got going on now. You know, it's probably uh, a, sort of a little truer to my original plan. And I'm not a stickler to sticking with the original plan at all. If I think the, the painting can be made better, if it can be improved by taking it in another direction, I'll do that too. I will, I'm not hesitant at all to do that. But for some reason, this time, I came across this photograph and I thought, yeah, I haven't really painted in that way so, uh, so dramatically for years. And I kind of missed that a little bit, so that's why I want to try it. Also, that knife that I used on the last painting, I used it in the foreground, um, is much larger than I'm used to, and I'd like to become more used to it, because I do enjoy doing larger paintings. And I really liked using that knife. It really aided in keeping things loose. You know, avoiding overmixing the colors, giving things some life and some flow. I really, really like that. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing on this painting as well. But I know my dad used to tell me, you know, you use a knife, you make, you can make more dramatic gestures, you can, you can, uh, you can make a more successful painting, a more, um, yeah, what would you say? Um, a more impressionistic painting, but your mistakes are going to be bigger. And the bigger knife you use, the bigger your mistakes will be. I'm willing to take the risk. It's okay. I usually know how to fix mistakes, but <laughs> yeah, you can end up with some pretty big ones otherwise uh, with the big knife. Whatever, it'll be fun. Okay, let's get that sky washed in.
So I am uh, washing in some of this sky now and I want it very toned down because I want those nice strokes to jump against this tint. Uh, I started out with ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and white. On this far corner, the lower edge, the higher edge here, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. But as we get away from here into here, I think you can see that I've added already some more alizarin crimson and white. Gradually working our way uh, towards the lighter part of the sky. I'm using this little brush to carve in around. Carve in around some of these branches. And as I get as I get closer to the focal area, I'm going to be getting rid of that blue eventually. And going to almost completely to um, to alizarin crimson and yeah some yellow ochre I suppose you know at least going in that direction now I know I've said in the past that I usually don't know whether I'm going to use a brush or a knife until the minute I decide so this painting that way is a bit of an outlier because I knew pretty much from from the, the, the beginning that uh, I wanted to go to I wanted to go to the knife to paint it in. But that is unusual. It's not normally how I approach things. Okay, let's just going into the same pile again it's just that now I'm only adding alizarin crimson and white and although I want the painting to be fairly loose all around uh, the against the subject matter against the certainly the foreground stuff I would like to remain I'd like to remain fairly accurate with the lines. We'll see. Once the knife comes into play, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, more lizard and crimson. And I'm even touching yellow ochre now. And some white. How's that? Okay, I think we can get away with that. This is a new brush. It's what is this? It's number two? No, it's not a number two. It's a it's a six. And yeah, I'm going a lot lower in value than I will be going or than than I'll be using once I get into the uh, the painting proper. You know, like once I really get after it. side just there and I'd like to curve it in a little bit so we'll do that it's not just a new brush it's a brand new brush so um, I don't mind wearing off those square shoulders. I think I've mentioned that before. I'll wear them off a little bit and then, then I'll stop using the brush for this. It's kind of good to stay organized to some degree. 
in some way, somehow. And I find this to be an efficient way of using my brushes up. No matter what happens when you're using a brush, you're wearing it out and there is no harm in being somewhat stewardly in your use of them. Crimson, yellow ochre, and white. Don't want to go too white yet. How was that? Yeah. Colors right, and values a bit low, I guess, or maybe not. No, values probably fine for now. Better going too low in value than too high. That's always my, that's my mantra. Easier to lighten than to darken. I'm not even convinced this little tree that I have sitting here is going to stay, but for the time being we'll just paint around it. I don't want too much light in this area because I want these trees to catch a lot of sunlight, you know, just certain portions of them. And then I would like the light in the sky to be more along this direction, drifting off to the left. You know, the highest intense, the highest intensity of the light. We'll see how that works out, as usual, but uh, for the time being, that's my thinking. And I'm using, I'm using some paint thinner right now. And it is simply hardware store type paint thinner. It's not something that's five thousand gallons or five thousand dollars a gallon. It's just paint thinner that can be well. It's actually designed to thin oil paint. And can also be used for cleaning your brushes. You don't want to use a thinner that is only for cleaning brushes. You want a you want a thinner that leaves a residue behind, and that's where traditionally turpentine has always been the best. Ah, mineral spirits as well, I guess. But I tend to stay away from mineral spirits. I find that when you know maybe they've improved. I, again, I don't keep up with the latest technology, but maybe if I were to take pure mineral spirits now and put it on a, on a piece of acrylic or glass, once it had completely dried up, there would be residue behind. You want to see residue. That residue acts as a binder, mechanical and chemical, to your other layers. Okay, I'll just keep playing with this. Our, our, our glow has started, as you can see. Now I think I'll fill in the majority of this area with a larger brush, because I don't want to Wreck the bristles on a small one, needlessly. I don't really want to repeat. You know, I, I have this. And we have this. And we have this. And we have this. I think there needs to be some sort of interruption there. So, I'm going to take my little bit bigger brush here. I'm going to go back into 
the colors that I'm using. And I'm going to oppose those lines. Mm, that's a bit that's a bit high value. Okay. Um, high value. It's a little lower value than the, than the foreground. That's fine. Don't care. You know, I'm not trying to shape clouds. That's really not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, you know, as I said, I liked the idea of, of you know, the heavier cloud to the left when it was needed. I don't think it's needed anymore because of how things have changed here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'm planning on, again, that sort of ethereal sky that I described, just ambient light. You know, if, if there's a lot of moisture in, in the atmosphere, it gets spread out, and it's just a design. That's all it is, because there's so much here now that I don't feel any need to do that back here. I may end up with some shapes, probably not very much, though. And I think... I think I'm going to add a hint of raw umber to that that I'm working with and make this a little bit darker and it's not just darker, it's lower chroma. Thank you raw umber. I, I don't mind the idea of of, you know, your eye being allowed to escape from the painting through the top. You know, it, well, your eye can escape through the painting all kinds of places, really. Okay, let me just grab this other brush I've been playing with. And I'll cut in here a little bit. Dirtier, that's fine. You know, I'm not I'm not making a painting right now. I'm preparing a painting. I'm preparing a canvas for a painting. Okay, that I always thought was a bit long. So we'll shorten it. like that I'm just speaking out loud about the things that I'm adding to my pile that will apply to the next few brush strokes. So this is a little job we'll just get out of the way right now. long line with a hard edge which I may change I very well change that once I take to the, once I take the knife to things I 
Okay, that's good. I like that bumping up against that. I would also like, I'll go back to the bigger brush now. So you kind of have an, uh, uh, an indicated line, okay? It's imaginary, but this branch is aiming back up towards here, right? And you have this bump off of here. So now this is a bit of a stretch, but somehow there are, there's a way of looking at this that says, okay, that connects to this in this point. Not so much here, not here at all. Um, but that's indicated line, and I think if I and if I and if I uh, repeat that in my coloring of the sky, that helps to yep. You, it lets your eye still off off of the off the canvas, but it helps to centralize your focus in this area. So I'm just going to do more of that. Our, we are back to our um, Lizard and Crimson Ultra Green Blue. That might be kind of dark, yeah, it is pretty dark. It's fine, don't worry about it. Keep it dark. This is the old brush. Not real old, but old enough. I don't mind scrubbing some of the bristles away. I know the painting as a whole looks very dark right now. I'm just fine with that. Okay. Let's go back into these. It's probably a bit dark. That's okay with me. Uh, let's just do that. Okay, that way we can say that itty bitty bit is done. Let's cut in here. Let's mix some yellow ochre and, and uh, alizarin crimson together here. We're still going back into our same pile. And let's find it. You know, I did a video quite a while back just about mother color. And there is no mother color. The mother color really applies to, or really has to do with with what your your base pile of color is on your palette at the moment and you can bend that pile of color every time you want a slightly different shade or, or you know deviation from value or chroma you don't need to clean your palette and and change your colors all you need to do is provided you don't have too much of one color on it. And you, you get used to this with practice. Um, just add to it. Add to one side of it, or add to the other side of it. That's entirely up to you how you do it. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just dipping into my mother color and changing it. I think I talked in the video about mother color being, you know, in that case it was applying to grays. You know, and if you have a huge canvas or a big, or any kind, actually any size, and you want to, you're, in general your, your theme is a gray sky, then mix up gray. You know, and for me that's usually ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. Well, actually it can be both. Um, and uh, raw umber and white. 
and then to you know just to give the sky variety I'll lean more towards ultramarine blue more towards cobalt blue or or, or very little blue at all Oop, my battery is done So I got this done now. Um, ready to start playing in the sky. Um, I have a rechargeable razor, which I love, but it's a bit unpredictable. <laughs> 